The Blackmagic eGPU is an external graphics enclosure sold exclusively at the Apple Store. It's the first time that Apple has sold an eGPU in its store, correlating with the fact that macOS was recently updated with official eGPU support back in the spring. This eGPU is the first chassis to include official support for the LG Ultrafine 5K display, a monitor that Apple promotes as a replacement for its now discontinued Thunderbolt display. But perhaps the most appealing feature of the Blackmagic eGPU is its silence. Advertising its ultra quiet status right on the product packaging, this enclosure is very low noise. But the launch alongside highly anticipated new MacBook Pro hardware, is this the eGPU you should consider for your Mac? Let's check it out right now. The Blackmagic eGPU is pricey at $700 before tax. That cost largely stems from the fact that it comes with a non-upgradable AMD Radeon Pro 580 GPU built in. Still, it's a lot of money when you consider that another all-in-one eGPU, the Gigabyte RX 580 Gaming Box, provides similar acceleration at a much cheaper price. Another reason why the Blackmagic eGPU demands the price it does is due to its design. Unlike most external graphics boxes, the Blackmagic eGPU features a look that's meant to be shown off and it uses high quality aluminum in doing so. Some may argue that the design is over the top and too large, but it's not just a black rectangle meant to be tucked away in some shadowy office corner. The 10 sided outer shell that makes up the unit is quite tall with the overall height coming in at just under a foot. And it's just a little over eight inches wide at its widest point. Other than a small black magic design logo on the front of the enclosure, the outer shell is just a solid piece of space gray aluminum. The top of the eGPU features a unique faux metal wave pattern that rests on top of a metal mesh material. Underneath the mesh is a large fan to help keep the GPU that lies beneath cool. And if you look closely through the mesh layer, you'll spy the large heat pipes that help keep the Radeon Pro 580 from breaking a sweat. On the bottom, you'll find the familiar wave pattern along with the built-in stand with the rubber feet to keep it firmly planted on your desk. And on the rear, you'll find all the IO ports that are sure to give you trash can Mac Pro flashbacks. The last little design detail is is a single down-firing LED that rests above the stand on the bottom of the enclosure. The LED light illuminates the footprint of the device in a dark environment and also clues you in as to when it's powered on. The Blackmagic enclosure provides users with full charging capabilities up to 85 watts, four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and a single HDMI 2.0 port. The HDMI port can be used for accessories such as VR headsets or an HDMI-enabled display. But there's one thing that's particularly special about the Blackmagic eGPU, and that's its extra Thunderbolt 3 port. This additional port can be used to drive the LG 5K ultra-fine display. Under the right circumstances, it can be a true set-it-and-forget-it solution for professionals. For those opting to connect to an HDMI display, the extra Thunderbolt 3 port can be used to daisy-chain additional peripherals such as CalDigit's TS3 plus Thunderbolt 3 dock. There's no power button on the eGPU that you'll need to fool around with. When you connect the Thunderbolt 3 cable to a Thunderbolt 3 enabled Mac running macOS 10.13.4 or later, your Mac will automatically recognize the eGPU performing all the configuration in a seamless nature. To remove the eGPU, you'll notice a special eject eGPU button in your Mac's menu bar and it works similarly to ejecting drives. Conspicuously missing from the Blackmagic eGPU is DisplayPort connectivity. Not entirely surprising considering that a lot of the marketing materials show LG ultra-fine 5K setups that use Thunderbolt 3. Thankfully, the included HDMI 2.0 port allows you to connect to a 4K-enabled display at 60Hz. And Blackmagic is far from the only company to provide users with inadequately short 0.5-meter Thunderbolt 3 cables, but I wish this trend would stop. A 2-meter active Thunderbolt 3 cable like this cost just a little bit more but gives you a whole lot more placement flexibility. It's easy to lament over the non-upgradable nature of this enclosure, but such a design does come with advantages. The biggest advantage is that it can be customized specifically for the graphics card contained inside. This allows for thermal engineering that can eclipse do-it-yourself eGPU setups and results in a much quieter operation. Although eGPUs have obvious gaming applications, the sort of person willing to drop 700 bucks on this particular eGPU is likely a professional creative. These users, more often than not, 
not desire quiet workspaces. The Blackmagic eGPU, because of its end-to-end -end design, is much quieter than typical enclosure setups where users provide their own GPU. Generating noise at approximately 18 decibels, you'll have to put your ear up to the Blackmagic eGPU in order to hear its fan noise, even when it's under load. Along with this, Blackmagic did a great job of keeping the unit cool with outer surfaces that remain cool to the touch during use. All of that acknowledged, the benefit of a whisper quiet eGPU is somewhat lost when you have a MacBook Pro with fans running at a high RPM. Many of the applications that take advantage of the eGPU, such as Blackmagic's own DaVinci Resolve, will, if pushed hard enough, cause the MacBook Pro fans to kick in a high gear. So yeah, the eGPU might be super quiet, but this benefit is sort of negated when the fans in your MacBook Pro start to spin up. Thankfully, however, this doesn't always happen. I was, for instance, very impressed to run the Unigen Heaven and Unigen Valley benchmark test, known for making the fans inside the MacBook Pro sound like they're preparing for takeoff in complete and utter silence. Now, obviously, that is just a synthetic benchmark. It's not a real world thing, but still it illustrates what an eGPU like this can potentially bring to the table. With the super quiet Blackmagic eGPU handling the graphics load, it provided a quiet workspace even with highly taxing computational work occurring before my eyes. This is something that no other eGPU solution on the market can currently claim, as off-the-shelf graphics cards come with cooling setups that won't hesitate to make their presence known when under load. With AMD's Vega graphics powering Apple's high-end iMac Pro, some may scoff at the idea of a lesser Radeon Pro 580 powered eGPU. Yet, as benchmarks have shown, the 580 can noticeably increase the graphics performance of machines like the MacBook Pro as long as your expectations aren't too high. Starting off with Geekbench 4, OpenCL, and Metal Test, you can immediately see the potential that an eGPU brings to the table. For both OpenCL and Metal Performance, the Radeon Pro 580 inside the external chassis provided nearly a two times boost. If you own a MacBook Pro without a discrete GPU, the performance difference will be even more apparent. Blackmagic's own DaVinci Resolve stands to gain a big performance boost from external graphics and is arguably one of the key reasons to consider this particular eGPU. This shouldn't come as a surprise, because Blackmagic has been very forward-thinking with wielding external graphics to their advantage. In fact, DaVinci Resolve Studio is one of the few apps that I know of that can take advantage of multiple GPUs at the same time, external or otherwise. If you primarily work in DaVinci Resolve, then an external GPU can provide a major upgrade to your workflow. Some of the OpenGL benchmarks perform better with an eGPU, but not enough for it to really matter for gamers looking to play AAA titles. Games like Rocket League, for instance, will play great at high settings, but don't expect to max out settings on graphics intensive modern titles using OpenGL. On that note, titles using the Metal API will usually fare better on the Mac. Here you can see F1 2017, which is a very demanding metal title that I had running at maxed out settings. As you can see, it's at least playable via an external display powered by the Blackmagic eGPU, but it required a workaround, and to be honest, a stronger card would have fared a lot better. You'll also see noticeable OpenCL benefits when using the Blackmagic eGPU. In our Luxmark tests, the Radeon Pro 580 provides double the performance of the Radeon Pro 560X discrete GPU in the upgraded 2018-15 15-inch MacBook Pro. Speaking of OpenCL, Final Cut Pro 10 can reap benefits from an eGPU, but there is one major catch. Out of the box, the Mac won't provide eGPU resources to Final Cut Pro, so even if you run the app on an external display connected to the Blackmagic eGPU, it won't make any difference compute-wise. This has been a disappointment for every Final Cut Pro 10 user who expects that the eGPU will help out in their workflows. The good news is that there is a rather simple-to-use workaround. To take advantage of an eGPU in Final Cut Pro 10, you'll need to use the set eGPU script that we reported on at the beginning of this month. This script uses functionality that's already baked into macOS as a part of the 10.13.4 update, but is yet to be exposed to the user via a GUI interface. With set eGPU enabled, the popular Bruce X 5K benchmark yields modest benefits from the Radeon Pro 580, and a 4 minute and 30 second project with effects exported at 4K did as well. The gains here aren't incredible, but added up over time, they could prove to be significant. Apple's eGPU support is still very much in its infancy, and I expect Pro apps like Final Cut Pro 10 to better take advantage of external graphics in future updates. 
at $699, the Blackmagic EGP will have limited appeal to the masses. The thing that strikes me the most is that it's an all-in-one eGPU that can't be upgraded. In other words, you're stuck with the Radeon Pro 580 for the lifetime of the device, although I suppose it's possible that Blackmagic could offer some sort of upgrade program in the future. For gamers in particular, the lack of upgrade potential is unappealing. There are already better graphics cards available like the RX Vega 56 and 64, and there will be even better graphics cards available in the future. Yet with all that said, there remains something very appealing about a pre-configured box that you can connect directly to your MacBook Pro and instantly have better graphics performance. It's worth reiterating again that this isn't just some bulky eyesore of a rectangle, but it's almost like a piece of art that happens to charge your MacBook Pro and help you connect to USB peripherals while providing a graphics boost at the same time. For LG Ultrafine 5K display users, it's especially appealing because it's so easy to just plug and play. If you're a professional creative and you want a good looking eGPU unit that you can unbox, plug in, and start using, then the Blackmagic eGPU when paired with the right applications may suit your needs. But if you're like most people, the idea of having an upgradable external graphics enclosure sounds more ideal. And if this is the case for you, there are definitely better options available out there. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section with your thoughts and opinions. If you appreciate this video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.